Keith Kelly, Director of Athletics Communication here at Henry's College. Alongside me is Head Men's Basketball Head Men's Basketball Coach, excuse me, Dad McCracken on our first uh Henry's Warriors Coaching Show of twenty nineteen. Coach McCracken, Indiana native, this is your ninth season at the realm of Hendricks basketball. What's been your uh, main, I guess, not perspective, but what's been um, something that you've always looked forward to here year, year in and year out? Yeah, I think, uh, well, first of all, thanks, Keith. I appreciate appreciate you getting me down to do this. Um, you know, I, I think the thing that I, I always look forward to is the challenge of having a new team. You know, we, we return a couple upperclassmen, uh, finished the year last year well, but that this team's very different, you know, and, and trying to figure out what what each team's going to bring every day to practice, every night when we play, and, and trying to get the pieces of the puzzle to fit together um, and uh, and try and put them in a position to, to make the best plays they can. Um, I always enjoy trying to trying to see – how each guy improves in the off season, what each what each recruit comes in and, and is able to bring to the table, and trying to see how that all fits together. You talk about you had a great year last year. You, I mean, you guys did. You guys made it to all the way to the SAA 2018 title game, fell by ten to Barry, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later as we have a rematch of that game tomorrow night. But before we look into that, let's go uh, one game at a time. Uh, recap on this season as a whole. You guys back in early November traveled on your shortest road game of the season, uh, you know, a couple miles across town, played UCA Division One foe, played really good, scored 74, 73 points against a Division One NCAA team, fell by 25, 26 points. That was a really good game. You had a couple freshmen step up and, uh, you know, against a, a really good um, a team that's been a contender in the Southland Conference here the last couple of years. Pretty good game to start of the season, right? Yeah, you know, it seems like forever ago now at this point. But, uh, but yeah, you know, the first game is always interesting. You, you never know what to expect from your team. You've been competing and practicing against each other uh, all fall, and so you don't, you don't quite know what to expect. And going into that game, we knew it would be a tough matchup. They would have us out, outsized at every position, but our guys came out and I thought played really, really well together. Uh, was happy with what I saw from our upperclassmen, happy with what I saw from our freshmen. And, uh, you know, we got some pretty devastating news right before that game, finding out that, that Preston had broken his hand. That's our leading returning scorer and, and all-conference player and a guy that's already scored 1,000 points during his junior year. And, um, you know, that was, that was tough, a tough pill to swallow. But uh, I was proud to have everyone else stepped up, and, and we hung in there with them for, for most of the game. And uh, I saw a lot of good things there that I think gave us a lot of momentum, um, you know, moving forward with the season. That was a great, you know, that was a great way to see how your team would react in a game that wouldn't count on the schedule. Sure. You know, you guys um, obviously being an exhibition opener, it not counting towards the season. You guys opened up the season in Dallas, took on a, a really tough UT Dallas team, um, and then – Lost that game, ended up playing another exhibition game against UAFS, another game that didn't count, another chance for you guys and for you as a coach to look and see what you guys have or what your team can consist of without that loss counting towards the overall record. So what did you see, I guess, after that UAFS loss? Sure. Um, you know, again, I thought we went and, and competed for 40 minutes. I thought we hung around the game. And, again, another night where uh, you get you get out-athleted and out, outsized at every position. And our guys just continued to fought. And, uh, you know, I think what we took away from that game is when we stay disciplined and we, we stay true to who we are and what we're trying to do as a team, uh, then we've got a chance to compete with, with most anyone. And, and uh, that was, I think, the big takeaway from that game. Played two exhibition openers, had your first game of the season on the road. You guys finally got to open up a uh, regular season here at home against a, a pretty nice Dallas team. Um, took the win against them by 14, four players in double figures, three out of the four being freshmen. That game in itself can tell, I guess it's a pretty much recap of the season as a whole. Freshmen have been a huge part of the season. And to start out the season with a really good win against the Dallas team here at home, protecting the home court, that's got to feel pretty good. 
Oh, absolutely. You know, those, you know, we've had, we've had those freshmen step up and, and, you know, we've got, you know, really five of them that are in the rotation and playing significant minutes for us and, and four of them are posts. And obviously last season's team, you know, we were lacking size inside and we were having to play guys out of position in there just to hang around with people. And, you know, you recruit guys and you don't always know, you know, how their game's going to translate to the next level and, and who's going to come in ready to play. And, and the four bigs have, have been absolutely huge for us. Um, but then Sean coming in at the guard spot um, has contributed well as well. And as you said, those guys, you know, those three uh, between Seth, Carl, and, and Sean have been our, you know, some of our leading scorers throughout the course of the season so far. And Jake and Alex come in and, and give us great minutes off the bench and, and have played well. Jake started a few games and played well. Alex got injured uh, in that Dallas game, um, but has come back and, and is healthy now and is starting to give us some great, great point production off the bench. So those freshmen, you know, that was kind of their coming out party, that, that game against Dallas here at home. And obviously as their coach, it was great to see. Uh, but I think it's, it's created a lot of excitement, I think, uh, here in the gym and on campus, just knowing that, uh, that we've got some pretty talented freshmen that uh, are already starting to play well. So we got the win against Dallas, went on to host the 2018 SCAC SAA Challenge took on a very tough Centenary team, got the win by two against a really solid team, a team that's around 500 in the American Southwest Conference, a, a really good conference out in Texas or based out of Texas in Louisiana. Um, really good win against them, turned around uh, the next day, lost a heartbreaking heartbreaker, excuse me, to Austin College, a game in which I believe we took the lead off of a, a Jack Eden layup with a little over a minute to go. Austin College ended up taking the lead again with 35 seconds to go, and we had a turnover with about 10 seconds to go. Just a heartbreaking loss. At that point in the season, what was the mindset in the locker room? You know, I, our mindset has been pretty good all season long. You know, what we've tried to do is not make any excuses and, and to not use our youth and inexperience as a crutch. And, uh, you know, what we, what we talked about in that game was just trying to find some consistency, some consistency in our mental approach, consistency in our play on the floor, consistency in our, in our togetherness as a team. And, you know, as, as disheartening as that loss was, you know, we, we were really trying to just move on, you know, take it one day at a time and, and hopefully learn from the past but not dwell on the past. And, you know, I think our guys, uh, I think our guys took that to heart and, uh, and tried to respond. And, um, you know, it, unfortunate, unfortunate to have the ball and, and not be able to get the shot that we wanted. Uh, but at the same time, I think it, it, it kept us hungry and made us better. Had that game, we still got to remain inside Grove Gymnasium, took on a, another ASC team in the East Texas Baptist University Tigers, fell to that team uh, by 11, but that's a team that consists of seven guys. It's either six foot, five inches, or higher, a team that's full of size and athleticism. Um, it's pretty much back and forth. You know, they pulled away in the second half, but still, I mean, to, for that to be a, a solid non-conference game, you had to be feeling pretty good about, about you know, playing pretty well against a really well-coached, um, well-maintained team. Yeah, ETBU, you know, we know every year it's going to be a great non-conference test for us, as is UT Dallas, as is, as is UD, as is all of our schedule. Um, you know, those guys, you know, coming off a great year last year, returned, returned just about everybody, if not everybody. And, um, you know, I think a little bit going into that game, our guys were looking ahead to the Thanksgiving break and, and getting some time away for a little bit, some much-deserved time away. Uh, but, you know, we hung around. We gave, ourselves, we gave ourselves chances. And, you know, as a coach, sometimes that's all you can ask for. After that game, uh, you guys still <laughs> stayed inside. Grove Gymnasium took on the Ozarks team, another team out of ASC. Got a lot of games against ASC teams this year. Um, defeated that team, 70-65, a game that was pretty much back and forth. You guys made some great plays down the stretch to pull away. Um, great game. Again, four players in double figures. Still those same four, as we talked about a few minutes ago, three out of those four being freshmen that reached 10 points or better. Um, you guys improved to three and two in the season. Great win against a great team. After that game, I believe that might have been um, the final game before, well, no, you, you touched on that about Thanksgiving break. Anyways, you guys improved to three to four. Took on a tough UT Tyler team, a team that's looking to transition to NCAA Division II here in the next year or so. Tough game against a tough team. What was the atmosphere like, I guess? Yeah, no, uh, you know, that that uh, 
Ozarks game, um, you know, that was our last home game, uh, you know, for about a month. Yeah. Um, which, which, you know, to be honest, I'm, I was okay with, you know, we, we, uh, and we can talk about it later. You know, we went into the break and it's always nice to kind of be on the road with your team while, while the, the college is kind of closed. Right. Um, and so fortunately we were able to schedule that non-conference wise. And then our, our conference schedule, uh, starting the first three on the road, uh, lended itself to that as well. But, um, yeah, you know, we played well here against those arcs and, and got a good win. I thought we played well for 40 minutes. Uh, you know, shots didn't fall necessarily as much as we expected them to, but we hung in there and played well. And again, we got that great contribution from those freshmen and and uh, and the upperclassmen that played. And and so then we hit the road uh, two days later, traveled the day of the game down to Tyler. Um, you know, and we're doing all of this, all of these games that we're talking about. We still don't have Preston. You know, we're right. still trying to figure out who we are yep. without Preston out there on the floor. And and guys, I thought did a great job of stepping up and contributing in different spots. And um, you know, the challenge was Preston goes down. We go play UCA. We play two days later at UTD. We play three days later at Fort Smith. Two days later against Dallas. Two days later against Centenary. A day later against uh, Austin College. Against Austin. Two days later against ETBU. We break for Thanksgiving. We come back and play immediately uh, against Ozarks. Two days later, go to Tyler, and then three days later on the road at at the University of Dallas. So during that stretch, we didn't really have any time here on the on the practice floor to kind of figure out rotations and to figure out where guys fit that we were doing it on the fly in games. And I think that's a challenge for me as a coach and a challenge for our guys as, as players. Um, but so, so going back to the Tyler game, you know, we hit the road, traveled the day of the game. Uh, Jacob, our junior guard, our, our second most experienced player goes down early with a, with an ankle. Um, and, uh, you know, we just, we didn't overcome adversity that night. You know, we let the adversity shake us and, and take us out of who we are. And, um, you know, that's a lesson that, that unfortunately we learned the hard way, but it, but nonetheless it's an important lesson moving forward through the course of the season. You mentioned after UT Tyler, three days later, taking on a Dallas team. You ended up getting a sweep uh, against Dallas, defeating them 82-66. to Cam Brasfield, sophomore guard out of Little Rock with a team high 20 points on 7 to 10 from the floor and 5 assists. You guys improved to your best start since the 2013-14 season. That has to feel pretty good, especially still being in the non-conference part of the season. Sure, it, it does. You know, we, we've we not gone a season uh, that I can remember uh, as head coach here where we haven't had significant adversity, whether it be through, through um, you know, guys missing significant games, uh, you know, travel schedules, uh, things like that. We, we've faced an incredible amount of adversity uh, as a program. It seems like every season, this year no exception, uh, with Preston going out and, and Jacob being in and out of the lineup with injuries. And, um, you know, to, to be able to sweep the University of Dallas, I, I think, is, is big for our guys. And, and like you said, to, to kind of build on some success in previous games and, you know, have, have – one of the best starts we've had to a season in a while, all while facing that adversity and also having games that we kind of wish we had back, um, you know, learning as a young team does. And so, um, you know, Dallas is always incredibly well coached. Jared does a great job there. And they, they had experienced guard play. And uh, as we said, you know, three of our top four scorers so far throughout the season, you know, have been freshmen. Um, and so at that point, we feel we feel pretty good about what we're doing as a program, what we're doing as a team, um, and feel pretty good about where we are moving forward. After the win against Dallas, to go on Austin College, looking to split the series in the season. Unfortunately, Austin College pulled away with the win, but that was Preston Smith. We talked about him a little while ago. He finally made his return. Season debut, did pretty good, um, fell to them. Also would fall to losing to college at UMHB in the first two games after Christmas break. Um, two tough ge- two tough games against two tough teams in a tournament, you know, back-to-back days. Got to put that aside you and got to bring in the 2019 season, starting out SAA play on the road. Really, really, really good win. 20-point win at Rhodes, largest victory against the Lynx in program history. Starting out the conference 1-0, and that had to make you feel pretty good. Sure, you know, and, and I'll go back to that stretch with Austin, Louisiana, and, and Mary Harden Baylor. You know, we played at Dallas on uh, on Sunday the 2nd, and then, you know, we go into finals and, and winter break. And 
um, you know, our finals here at Hendricks last almost two complete weeks. And so there's two weeks where we can't we're not just play in games, but we're, we're having a hard time scheduling practices, you know. And so we come off that, that win at Dallas, and we've got some great positive momentum. And unfortunately, we have to hit the brakes on it and, and take some time and take care of academics, um, you know, which I couldn't be prouder for our guys. I need to brag on them here. You know, first semester comes to an end and, and our team GPA, when it's all said and done, is over a 3.0. And so, again, that's just a, a testament to the type of guys that we have and the work that they put in, um, in, in in every aspect of their life, not just as basketball players. So, again, we've got this po- this positive momentum on the basketball floor that, that comes to a halt for two weeks. Um, we get back together, you know, as finals are coming to a close. We practice a little bit. We hit the road. We go to Austin. We play, we play okay. We don't play great. We play okay, and it, um, that night it wasn't good enough. They hit some shots late that we just we couldn't answer. Um, but, again, I was okay with how we played. You know, it's disappointing. Then we break for Christmas, and, and we're off, you know, give the guys a week for Christmas to go home and spend time with their families. We come back, and, and we come back on the 26th. We leave the 27th for Texas and go play two teams in Louisiana College and Mary Harden Baylor that combined had lost two games on the season so mm-hmm. far. And uh, we competed with Louisiana College. We hung around. We had a chance late. We just – another one of those that we just couldn't pull it out. And then uh, the Mary Harden Baylor game – you know, I think we were we were uh, smarting some wounds from the night before. You know, Jacob was was still fighting through injury. Preston was still trying to figure things out. And um, you know, I thought we played well in that game. But but they're a super talented team. Uh, another team that that just out athleted us at every position and had the size advantage as well and caused us some trouble. But you know, we built a tough non-conference schedule for a reason. And and games like that teach you a lot about your team and and a lot about your teammates. Um, and so we had to come back and focus on some things that, that we maybe hadn't been focusing on. Um, and I think ultimately that put us in a position to do exactly what we did, go on the road after the new year to Rhodes and, and to play well and to play well for 40 minutes and to, to pull out a great, a great win to start, the, to start the conference season. Had the great win against Rhodes. Two days later, we'd take on Swanee at Swanee, fell to them, would take on Senior two days later, fall to them, fell to one and three, in the SAA play, but we opened up this past weekend, faced Millsaps and BSC, defeated Millsaps just like he did Rhodes, another 20-plus point win, 23-point victory to be exact. Again, the largest victory ever against Millsaps. That's two wins in SAA play, both record-setting fashions. That has to make you feel pretty good as a coach. Sure. You know, following the Rhodes game, we stayed on the road. Um, We played them on a Wednesday night in Memphis. We traveled over to Chattanooga, the Chattanooga area on Thursday, played Sewanee on Friday, um, traveled Saturday to Kentucky and played center on Sunday. So it was quite the gauntlet of a road trip to start conference play. And, um, you know, center and Sewanee finished one and two in the league last year, bring back everybody off of those teams, Um, you know, and and we got down early against Sewanee and, and, made some adjustments, fought our way back into the game and, uh, you know, had it at five points on a couple occasions late. And again, just couldn't get over the hump. But, you know, it's a road conference game and we didn't get off to a great start. So all in all, I think we learned and and grew from that experience, traveled up to center and, and did the opposite. We got off to a great start, you know, led for the first 25 minutes of the game. Um, unfortunately, just couldn't sustain it, you know, couldn't get shots to fall late. We had a few empty possessions. and um, But again, you go on the road and, and start conference play with three road games, two of them being the, the top two returning teams on paper in the conference, um, and have a chance in both of those games. You know, I, I'll take it. I, I would have I taken that before we left, and, and I'm proud of, proud of how we played on that road trip. We mentioned the Millsaps game. You guys won by 23. We also faced Birmingham Southern two days later, uh, a team that's, that's pretty, been pretty consistent throughout the season. You guys are back and forth for pretty much the entire game. They made a couple of plays down the stretch to seal a full-point victory on the road to defeat us uh, this past Sunday. Stanley, Seth Stanley, excuse me, a freshman guard uh, from North Arkansas, 25 points. Brasfield, five assists, and Preston Smith, 10 points, including two threes to move into second all-time and three-pointers made here at Hendrickson is now 20, uh, 24th, I believe, or no, 27th all-time, excuse me, uh, all-time in the scoring history. Good win against Millsaps. Two days later, tough loss against 
BSC. What was the, the mindset in the locker room? Sure. Uh, you know, I thought Friday against Millsaps, we put together about about as complete a game as we possibly could. You know, they're a really good team. I think their record coming in was something like 12-4 and four or, or something like that. And, um, you know, they, they were huge at every position. And I thought we executed about as well as we possibly could have at both ends of the floor. And, you know, the message after the game and on Saturday was, you know, it's not that we won, it's how we won, how we went about our business. And, you know, trying to bottle that up and, and, and continue that. And uh, unfortunately on Sunday, you know, I thought we got a great effort from BSC. I thought they made shots that they that they hadn't on the year. Guys stepped up for them late. I didn't think we had our best execution at both ends of the floor. Again, with that being said, and, and with our youth considered, uh, you know, we had we had a one-point lead with a minute and a half to go. We had the ball down one with a minute to go, and we had a shot to, to take the lead with about 10 seconds to go, eight seconds to go. And, um, you know, I, I thought it was a good shot. I thought it was the right shot. It just didn't go in. And, um, you know, again, we, we, despite not playing our best game, had an opportunity to win. And, uh, you know, the challenge now is for us to continue to put ourselves in that position, but to learn how to finish games a little bit better, you know, to learn how to, to, to get the best shot possible and then to be ready to step up and make that shot when it, when it presents itself. We've got, as you said, we've got, you know, a really deep team. We've got six, seven, eight guys that I feel comfortable taking that shot late in the game. And, and any single one of them not only can take it, but they can make it. Um, and so, you know, I, shared with our team. I don't know who our leading scorer is going to be night to night. Um, we've got several guys that can step up and do that for us. What needs to be our focus is who's going to step up and defend, who's going to step up and rebound, who's going to create for other guys on the team. If we have that mindset um, and we're not concerned with who's leading us in scoring, it, it, again, it could be anybody, uh, but we'll be, we'll be talking about that after probably a win. Um, because I, I feel like top to bottom we can compete with anyone in our league. Um, I'm really happy about where we are, and, and I'm excited to see how we, can, how we can play this weekend. You talk about having a deep team, 19 guys, nine freshmen, um, 14 underclassmen. That's equivalent to 73% of your underclassmen on your team. Is that, is that nerve-wracking or is it stressful? <laughs> or, you know, what's, what does it feel like? Uh, you know, again, we, we honestly, we try not to talk about it. You know, we, we, we certainly aren't going to use it as a crutch. We aren't, we aren't going to lean on that when things aren't going well. Um, you know, and at this point in the season, you know, those five freshmen that have been in the rotation and, and played all those minutes, you know, in my opinion, they're not freshmen anymore. Um, you know, and, and, you know, they've all stepped up in different roles and in different ways. And, um, you know, sure, it's a challenge trying to figure your team out, but we've gotten good leadership from our upperclassmen, whether it be our, you know, our seniors, our juniors, or, or even our sophomores. And so um, those guys have done a good job of, of you know, kind of teaching our, our culture to the freshmen and teaching them, you know, what winning basketball looks like. And uh, again, we feel, we feel great about where we're at and, and we don't focus too much on our age or our youth. Seth Stanley currently leading the team in points per game, 15.4, third in the SAA, shooting 36.5% from beyond the arc. Carl Fitch, another freshman, 54.9% from the field, another team high, fifth in the SAA in conference. Um, Smith, you know, he's only played uh, nine games or eight games, I believe. Uh, he just moved into 24th all time. I mentioned that earlier, averaging 14.6 per game, 32.5% from beyond the arc. One of two seniors, him and Mike Calamese. This is a really, really, and we, we, we talked about, you know, the last couple of times having those three freshmen um, reach double figures, but it's been more than three freshmen that have been providing assistance, whether it be off the bench, in the starting lineup. You know, you mentioned Conrad. You mentioned uh, Coleman. Coleman shooting 97% from the free throw line, which is unheard of from any collegiate player, much less a freshman, much less a true freshman. You talk about it not wanting to be a crutch, but – it seems like you already have guys that have only played 15 to 16 college games make an impact that all these other teams are seeing, that they're showing everybody that they have what it takes to be a true, successful collegiate player in the years to come. Yeah, no no doubt about it. You know, it, it's you, – you get excited about recruits, um, you know, and, and inherently you fall in love with them. You spend all your time talking to them and trying to sell them on your program and your institution and – you know, we've got great things to sell here. And, and fortunate enough for, for us, those guys bought into it. 
Um, but so did the guys before him and the guys before that and the guys before that. Um, you know, Preston Preston had the opportunity to play a lot as a freshman. Jacob Jacob had the opportunity to play a lot as a freshman. Cam and Trey and those guys and Jack, you know, all played a lot a, as freshmen. And so, um, you know, again, uh, those guys have stepped up and made plays and those upperclassmen have done a good job of leading them. And, uh, you know, again, it's it's something that we are certainly excited about. Uh, but we're not waiting. We're not waiting until those guys are older. We're, we're going to try and win and win right now. And, and I'm, I'm proud of the effort those guys are putting in. And, you know, more importantly, it's, it's you know, those guys are playing hard and, and playing well on game days. It's the work that they put in in practice that I'm most proud of. You know, those guys show up every day, uh, come to work, get better, uh, and in the process have been have been great teammates. And so we're, I, I'm, I feel really good about where we're at. We'd love to have a few games back. Uh, but at the same time, we still have not played a single game at 100%. Uh, Preston's still knocking off the rust from the from the broken hand, and uh, you know Jacob's still knocking off the knocking off the rust of of the injuries he's battled. And you know at this point in the year, I know everybody's hurting, uh, everybody's sore, everybody's tired, everybody's got something nagging at them. Uh, but you know we we still have yet to to have our whole unit out there together. Um, hopefully, we're getting closer to that, and and hopefully. Uh, other guys continue to step up with the opportunities that, that have presented themselves so far. Looking ahead to this weekend, two really big games. I know you have the same mindset as Coach Gang had earlier. We talked about it earlier, one game at a time. Rematch of the 2018 SAA title game. If you're not a basketball fan, then I don't know what to tell you, but <laughs> this has got to be a game that everybody in the conference has to be, you know, keeping an eye on and see if, you know, see if we're going to prevail or see if, you know, just see how it turns out. Elijah Hirsch. Uh, for Barry, just got named, you know, SAA Player of the Week, National Player of the Week, all this stuff. I guess give us a preview on Barry in a rematch of the 2018 SAA Championship game. Sure. Um, you know, they graduated a few seniors off that team last year, but uh, obviously Hirsch is a load, um, you know, and he's actually – he's added a step-out three to his game over the off season, And, you know, he's 6'8", he's physical, he's a senior – you know, he's played in this league two years. He played in an NAIA league before that for two years. And he's got all kinds of experience, um, you know, and, and he's a talented player. Like I said, he can step out and shoot threes now. He's he's great in the post. He's a good passer. He's a good finisher. He's a handful, you know, and, and, and they brought in another guy, transfer from Covenant, that uh, is playing really well for him at the five and uh, is shooting, I think, something like 73.7% from the field on the year and, and averaging eight rebounds. So those two will, will present quite the test. And, you know, as we said, you know, we'll be throwing out four freshmen against them, uh, you know. And, and, but I've got all the confidence in the world in, in my guys, and, and I think our freshmen will rise to the occasion and, and play well against those two. And, you know, they've got some experienced guards that, that come back off of last year's tournament championship team. And, uh, you know, we obviously wanted to win that game last year and, and just came up a few plays short. And, and credit to them, they played incredibly well. Um, you know, our team looks a lot different than it did in the tournament last year. And, uh, you know, I, again, I'm anxious to see more than anything. I'm just anxious to see if we take care of what we've been what we've been working on and and anxious to see if we continue to improve the way we have so far this season. And and like Coach Gang said earlier, I'm sure, you know, we are going to take it one game at a time. The next game is tomorrow night with Barry and we'll focus all our effort on that. We'll we'll regroup Saturday and and get ready for Oglethorpe on Sunday, which will be another great test. But, uh, you know, the league is the league is really strong this year. I think if you look at the collective record in the league, it's probably about a 67 percent win percentage. Uh, you know, and now we're beating up on each other. Um, it's it's anybody's race. And, and uh, you know, we've played three of our first five on the road, including at the top two returning teams from last season. And so. We obviously wish we had the Birmingham game back, but that's not how it works. And so we just move on, try and get better, and try and take care of business this weekend and try and build some momentum and continue on that momentum through the rest of, through the, rest of the year. Last thing right here, I did this to Coach Gang earlier today, and, and he didn't like it or he was unprepared. <laughs> Tell the listeners and viewers one thing about yourself that they, not, that they might not know about yourself. Oh, wow. One thing about me that, that people might not know. It's a great question. I don't mind it at all. I'm going to have to think about it okay. for a little bit. I, you no know, I, if you ask my team, they probably feel like they know me pretty well. We 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 have a lot of conversations, and and I'm really big on really big on the relationship side of being a coach. I, I, it's not just what we do here on the floor. It's about getting to know those guys and what motivates them and what makes them tick. And 
Um, you know, nothing satisfies me more than having, you know, former players or even parents, families of former players come back to games, which we've had an absolute ton of this year. That's, that's why we do it. Um, and so I, if you ask my team, I think they would probably, I think they would probably know most things about me. Um, I tell you what, I'll brag on myself a little bit. I'm a pretty good golfer. I knew that was going to come I'm a pretty up. good golfer. I'm a low handicap. Uh, the thing that most people may not know, though, if they know that, is that my wife is still probably a better golfer better than I golfer. am. And that, that pains me to admit, but uh, it's, it's probably the truth. If she gets out and, and practices and plays, she's probably going to take home the, the win, even if I play well. She's, she's about scratch when she's practicing and, and on top of her game. So it, it pains me to admit it, and I'll give credit to her that uh, although we're a pretty good duo, we're a pretty good duo. Thursday nights over the spring, summer, and fall, we play in the couples scramble uh, at the at the course where we're members, um, and we've got a pretty a pretty high win rate. I'd say we're we're about a ninety five percent success rate at the couples scramble. So we're solid. a pretty good duo. Unfortunately, she probably carries the carries the family <laughs> name when it comes to when it comes down to it. So. Tiger Woods or Phil Mickelson? Who you got? Oh man, that's a tough one. Uh, moving forward, I, I'm probably going Tiger. Going Tiger. Okay, well, that's pretty good, pretty good information we didn't know about you. This is going to be it from Garrison Court and Grove Gymnasium. We will see you guys next week on the Hendricks Warriors Coaches Show. Thanks, Coach, for coming on. Thank you, Keith. Appreciate it. Yes, sir.